Well, hi there. Chameleons, like this panther chameleon that I'm holding, are arguably the coolest lizards in the world. They can change colors, and like all of their colors are beautiful. They have these independently moving eyes that can be looking at different things all at the same time. They've got these weird feet that have like clusters of toes. Awesome. They've got prehensile tails, which is the coolest kind of tail anything can have, and best of all, they don't drop them. And they've got this magical tongue that shoots out like the length of their body and grabs stuff. It is no wonder that we picked a chameleon as our logo. They're just stinking rad. What could be cooler than this? Probably nothing. But many of you have noticed that we haven't ever recommended a chameleon as a pet lizard. This wasn't an oversight. Chameleons are difficult pets. But of all the chameleons, this one, the panther chameleon, is possibly the best. There is, however, an alternative to a chameleon. This guy over here. This is a bearded anole also known as a false chameleon. Now, false chameleons, despite the name, are actually only distantly related to real chameleons. But they have many of the same features that make true chameleons so stinking rad. So the question is, which one is the better pet? The true chameleon, in this case, the panther chameleon, or the bearded anole, the false chameleon? I think we gotta put them head to head. Deciding which one is really the better pet, the true chameleon or the imposter, will come down to our three head-to-head -head categories, which are awesomeness, because you wouldn't want to own it if it wasn't stinking awesome, expensiveness, and difficulty. Let's start out with awesomeness. And I'm going to start out awesomeness talking about true chameleons. Because in very many ways, this lizard, the panther chameleon, might be the most awesome chameleon on earth. And I want to take just a moment to talk about this specific chameleon because I am actually borrowing this chameleon from Animal Ark in Orem, Utah, which is one of the great pet stores. I, I've told you before, there are good pet stores and there are bad pet stores. And this is one of those really great pet stores. And one of the best things is they, they carry a wide variety of different exotic reptiles and other animals, and they ship all over the United States. All right, but I want to talk not just about this specific panther chameleon, but about panther chameleons in general, because they're amazing. First of all, and this is obvious, they are beautiful. Males especially are probably the most brilliantly colored of any lizards out there, probably the most brilliantly colored chameleons. And they come in a whole bunch of different color morphs and localities that range from kind of greens and blues to more like reds and yellows and oranges and just all kinds of amazing colors. And a lot of times you'll find all of these all in the same animal. Amazing. Their eyes move independently of one another, so they can be looking at two different things at the same time. And they only bring them together when they need to focus on a specific target so they can launch their magical wizard tongue out. It can shoot out oftentimes as long as their body is, and it grabs stuff and pulls it back to the mouth, which is one of the coolest feeding apparatus in existence. On top of being brilliantly colored, they can change colors. So one individual may look one way because it's feeling a certain mood at one time, and when it's feeling a different way, it changes color. They might be different at night. They might be different based on the color or what the humidity is like. And basically every color they turn is just glorious beyond all description. Some people will tell you that they change color in order to blend in, but the truth is they almost never blend in. It has a lot more to do with communication and just how they are feeling than it does with trying to be camouflaged with the environment. They're expert climbers, and they've got some really unusual and just totally amazing adaptations that allow this. One of them is this prehensile tail. Prehensile means you can grab stuff with it, and they can wrap that tail into a tiny little corkscrew, and they can use it as an anchor wherever they're going. And then they can lunge forward with their goofy hands and feet that have bundles of toes. They've got five toes, but they're bundled into effectively two toes that act like a pincer. Amazing. It's like a mitten hand. As far as chameleons go, panther chameleons are pretty good about handling. I wouldn't recommend handling them excessively as they can become stressed. 
and it is pretty likely that occasionally they're going to at least threaten to bite you if they don't bite you for real, but their bite is really not something to be feared. They're just kind of silly gooses. They're all bluff. They puff up, they hiss, they open their mouth, and they go, I'm big, and you can stick your hand right in their mouth, and a lot of times they won't even bite down. And even when they do, it's not really anything to worry about. Though they aren't fantastic for handling, they make up for it by being very, very active. So inside of their enclosure, they are exploring all day long, and that makes them really interesting captives. Panther chameleons have some of the most awesome attributes of any lizard in the world. How could any lizard stack up? If any non-chameleon can, it's going to be the false chameleon. False chameleons aren't as brightly colored as panther chameleons, not by any stretch of the imagination. Their coloration is definitely a lot more about crypsis, about being able to hide, camouflage. But they do change colors. I've seen them go from gray to brown to almost black to white to green, all in the same individual based on humidity, temperature, background color, mood. They definitely have that color changing ability and they are beautiful, but not quite as striking as a panther chameleon who is. Just like true chameleons, the false chameleons have independently moving eyes that they only bring together when they're trying to get depth perception so they can hunt something. And they also hunt with their tongue, which is purplish blue and stinking rad, but it doesn't shoot out anywhere near as far as a true chameleon's tongue. They actually launch kind of their whole body forward and they usually sneak up on stuff and get pretty close before they even take a lunge at it. Whereas with a true chameleon, it might be on the other side of the enclosure and your little cricket or cockroach thinks it's good to go until whammo, tongue in the eye. Like true chameleons, false chameleons are expert climbers, but they go about it differently. They don't have the bundle little mitten hands like true chameleons do, and they don't have a prehensile tail. They've got a semi prehensile tail, which means they can wrap stuff a little bit, but not do the like corkscrew. They can't really grasp things quite like a true chameleon can, but they do use it to hold on and their feet, even though they're not bundled into mittens, they do have adhesive toe pads like a, a gecko or other anoles do, which means they can climb on slippery leaves and even right up glass. So that's different, but arguably just as cool, maybe even cooler than the chameleon mittens. Unlike true chameleons, false chameleons are really excellent about handling. I still wouldn't recommend handling them for extended periods of time, but they are so mellow. They're basically never going to try to bite and they usually don't even run very much. They're just going to sit there on your hand and hang out. And that's pretty fantastic. And this makes up for the fact that most of the day they just sit motionless in their enclosures. Even studies in the wild have shown that given uh, an abundance of space, most of the time they will just hold perfectly still and pretend to be a stick. Both of these lizards are totally awesome, and frankly, in a lot of very similar ways. Personally, I think that panther chameleons are just a little bit more awesome than false chameleons. But false chameleons, they're imposters, do come in a close second. It's just, how do you beat this? This might be as cool as it gets. This round goes to the panther chameleon. When it comes to expensiveness, both of these lizards are what I would consider to be a moderately expensive lizard. They're going to cost you probably right around or a little over $200 just to get one. And then, of course, if you want some of the rarer uh, localities of panther chameleons, they might run you even more. Panther chameleons might be a little bit more expensive, but it's fairly comparable. The enclosures for both are also similarly expensive. Panther chameleons, because they're more active, probably need a larger screen enclosure than do false chameleons. And also false chameleons give you a, a wider range of different kinds of enclosures you can use. True chameleons generally need to be in a screen or mesh enclosure. They don't do well in glass. They need the ventilation and they also hate other chameleons. And so seeing their reflection all day long causes undue stress. False chameleons seem to do just fine in a glass enclosure as long as it has ventilation through the lid. And then, of course, they do fine in a mesh tank as well. Very cool. Both of them are going to need either, well, preferably real plants, but they also will do okay with fake plants and a lot of climbing areas. These are neither of them animals that like to spend time on the ground. Both of these need UVA heat bulbs, and they're also going to need UVB basking bulbs, and those are expensive and need to be replaced fairly regularly. They both need to be misted, 
on a regular basis, and they both need a dripping system to really know that they can drink this. Uh, bearded and Knowles, false chameleons, theoretically can drink from a bowl sometimes. True chameleons almost never will, and both of them do a lot better if they've got something dripping water onto like a leaf or some other structure that they can lap off of. Otherwise they might not recognize it and they can die of dehydration even if water was abundantly available to them. Both of them are going to need insect feeders, a wide diversity of insect feeders. False chameleons also love snails, so if you've got a supply of clean, parasite-free, captive-bred snails, they love those. You can even order those online, which is pretty fantastic. But both of them need insect feeders. However, being a larger and more active lizard, chameleons in general and panther chameleons are definitely going to eat a lot more insect feeders than are false chameleons. And we'll have links to all of these things down in the description. Overall, these are fairly comparable in cost, but panther chameleons are going to cost just a little bit more to buy, they're going to cost just a little bit more to house, and they're going to cost just a little bit more to feed. And because of this, this round, expensiveness goes to the false chameleon. Our last category is difficulty. Difficulty is the reason that we've never recommended a true chameleon before. They are a more difficult group of lizards to keep than most. Females, even that aren't exposed to a male, quickly begin to lay a lot of eggs and they'll crash and die at a young age. They just live fast and die young. Males live longer because they're not laying the eggs, but even males don't live a very long time. But that's sort of a best case scenario because conditions need to be really, really ideal for them. You need to make sure that they don't become dehydrated. That's going to be the biggest thing. But also, you need to get your temperatures right. You need to get your humidity right. You need to have proper ventilation. You just need to make sure you have all your ducks in a row because chameleons don't tend to give you a second chance. Again, as chameleons go, panther chameleons are one of the best. But they're still not a very resilient species compared to most other lizards, at least the lizards that we have recommended. The false chameleon, comparatively, is a much easier lizard to keep. They've got similar dehydration issues, but in all other ways, the false chameleon is going to be far more forgiving, far more suited to somebody who's newer to the reptile hobby. As a result, this round, difficulty, goes to the false chameleon. Both of these lizards are incredible and they're incredible for a lot of very similar reasons. The false chameleon is just the better suited of the two to life in captivity. Bearded and gnolls are easier to handle, cheaper to keep, and easier to keep alive. The panther chameleon in many ways is just a bit more awesome, and I can totally see why a person would want to keep one. I would recommend a false chameleon, a bearded and gnoll, to a new keeper way before I would recommend any kind of a chameleon. Overall, this head-to-head -head is won by the false chameleon. But, if you are certain that you are ready for a pet chameleon, I can't think of any better than the panther chameleon. Expect full videos on both the bearded anole and the panther chameleon in the very, very near future. And as always, like and subscribe. Make sure to click that little bell so you get a notification when those videos come out. And we hope to see you real soon. Come a come a come a come a come a come a chameleon. We shouldn't quit our day jobs. He's like, I'm out. Forget that. I'm not listening to it. One more moment of that song. Come a come a come a come a come a false chameleon. I got my eye on you. For now you're mine. I lied. Amazing. It's like a mitten hand. Who wouldn't want that? <laughs> <laughs> Got him.